Good morning. Welcome to the July Public Safety News Conference. This morning we'll have presentations by both the Winston-Salem Police Department and the Winston-Salem Fire Department. I am Assistant Police Chief W.S. Weaver II. I'm the Assistant Police Chief over the Patrol and Special Operations Division. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of the women and men of the Winston-Salem Police Department for all of their hard work and dedication to serving the citizens of Winston-Salem 24 hours a day, seven days per week. The Winston-Salem Police Department will honor Officer Russell Mark Willingham Jr. on July 30th with a remembrance ceremony as Officer Willingham's end of watch occurred on July 30th, 2011. 2011. During that incident, Officer Willingham lost his life as a result of a single vehicle accident near the intersection of Bargrave Street and Diggs Boulevard while responding to assist another officer. Let us pause for a moment to honor Officer Russell Mark Willingham, Jr. Thank you. Today we'll be discussing basic active shooter in survival information, moral Monday information, Narcan use by the Winston-Salem Police and Fire Departments, tourniquet use by the Winston-Salem Fire Department and Police Department, Community Resources Unit, and the Community Relations Specialist. To begin our discussion about some basic active shooter survival information, let us all remember that on June 17th, an active shooter utilizing a high-capacity firearm killed nine Charleston, South Carolina citizens in a prayer service at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Since that time, officers with the Winston-Salem Police Department have received inquiries from churches, businesses, and individuals on how to protect themselves from an active shooter. Unfortunately, these types of incidents have occurred far too frequently across the United States, and our citizens must be prepared in the event they find themselves in a similar incident. In fact, as an aspect of City of Winston-Salem workplace violence training in 2013, all City of Winston-Salem employees were required to attend response to active shooter training. We've seen similar training provided to all Winston-Salem Forsyth County school system employees. First, please understand that active shooter incidents typically occur where large numbers of people gather. Therefore, always be alert to your surroundings, and if you see suspicious activity, report it to authorities. As an example that just happened in Fayetteville last week, a man walked through the mall carrying an assault rifle and ammunition. Police received multiple calls from citizens regarding the, his actions. That's exactly what we want. If you see something, say something. If you see something, say something. Report it to law enforcement authorities. If you become aware of an active shooter incident within your vicinity, run. Exit the area immediately, call 911. And let me repeat that. If you detect an active shooter incident within your vicinity, run, exit the area. If you can't exit the area, then hide. When we state hide, what we mean by that is get into a room and utilize everything available within that room to barricade the door. Typically, an active shooter is trying to kill as many people as possible as quickly as possible. If they have difficulty getting into a room, they may move on. If they enter the area you're in and you can't run away, then you must fight. And remember, an active shooter incident is about killing as many people as possible as quickly as possible. So typically begging for your life will be unproductive. Fight. Utilize anything. Improvise anything that's available to you as a weapon and fight. This is the fight of your life. This is a fight for your life. So just to recap, stay alert in all of your surroundings. If you see something, say something, report it to authorities. Run hide, fight. Next, we'd like to ask for you to hold all of your questions until the completion of all of the public safety presentations from both the police department and the fire department. Our next presentation will be conducted by Lieutenant Vince Riga, who will discuss the Moral Monday information that's available to us at this point in time. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Vince Briga, Special Operations Division. As you may be aware, the NAACP is holding its Moral Monday March for Voting Rights this coming Monday, July 13th. The march will begin and end at Corporate Plaza downtown. During the 5 to 6 o'clock hour, 
Significant delays and rolling road closures can be expected around Corpening Plaza. This will include 4th Street, Main Street, 1st Street, Cherry Street, and all the streets within that curtilage. During this time, motorists wanting to access Cherry Street from US 421, Business 40, should use the Broad Street exit, proceed northbound to 6th Street, and then take 6th Street east to Cherry Street. Thank you. The next presentation will be on the utilization of Narcan by both the Winston-Salem Police Department and Winston-Salem Fire Department. This will be conducted by Captain P.J. Murray of the Winston-Salem Police Department and Captain Belcher of the Fire Department. Good morning. I'm Captain Murray with the Special Operations Division of the Winston-Salem Police Department. And I'd like to announce that the Police Department, as of last month, began issuing nasal naloxone kits to our patrol officers. And the reason we chose to do this is we've seen, as I'm sure you all are aware, an alarming increase in opiate overdoses and deaths across the country, and Winston-Salem has been no exception to that. Looking at a 12-month period uh, that ended September 27, 2014, the Winston-Salem Police Department responded to 109 calls in which Forsyth County EMS and or the fire department administered naloxone to persons in opiate overdose and that could be either by prescriptions or illegal substances such as heroin. Over 40% of those times, the Winston-Salem Police Department was first on scene. We arrived prior to EMS or the fire department and we had no tools to assist us in, help in aiding the person who was in the opiate overdose. So, thanks to the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition who provided us with the training, Dr. Rory Olson, who's the Forsyth County Medical Director of EMS for writing the prescription for us, and Dr. Chad Stevens, the Medical Director at Centerpoint, for Centerpoint providing us with 80 of the kits. And these are the nasal naloxone kits, and Captain Belcher with the Fire Department will discuss that with you, but we are also applying for a grant to a pharmaceutical company in hopes of obtaining a donation of nasal, I'm sorry, auto injector naloxone kits. And we're hoping to eventually have enough kits to supply all of our patrol officers so that we can help save lives of people in overdose. Captain Belcher. Real quick, we just uh, we put this program together just to kind of give you a, a little background on the Narcan. Uh, the Winston-Salem Fire Department has been carrying Narcan for several years now. We currently carry two milligrams. Police department's kits are actually going to carry four milligrams. Uh, uh, what it does is, is currently in use on the ambulance as well. Uh, the drug that we carry and the police department carries is given intranasally, meaning it's given through the nasal patches or passages, and it's a simple use. Uh, the kit itself comes in three pieces. Uh, you got actually got the drug vial, which I'll show you on a, a picture here in just a minute. Uh, but it's used for respiratory depression due to opiate overdoses, and as Captain Murray mentioned. What we've seen over the past years is the increase of heroin use that's being, that has fentanyl in it. And that's what's causing the respiratory depression and the increase with the uh, use of the Narcan. Uh, the medication itself, it's basically an opiate antagonist. And what that means is it attacks or it blocks the uh, opiate drug itself from attaching to those receptors, mm -hmm. which in turn, uh, the, the opiate itself, as it attaches to the receptors, it actually depresses the central nervous system, which causes the breathing to drop off. Uh, and when we give the Narcan, it basically takes the opiate and pulls it off of those receptors and, and blocks that, and so we can hopefully uh, increase their uh, central nervous system and, and increase their respiratory drive. Uh, like I said, it's carried two milligrams and two cc's. PD's carrying, WSPD's carrying four milligrams. Uh, it's basically given half a dose in each nostril. And like I said before, it's a three-piece kit, and that's the basic picture of it. Uh, you've got your syringe, your vial, and your, uh, uh, it's called a nasal atomizer. Uh, and you basically screw the kit together and administer half the dose in each nostril, as stated before.
Our next presentation will be on the use of tourniquets by the Winston-Salem Police Department. This presentation will be given by Police Sergeant Ed Branshaw. Morning. I'm Sergeant Ed Branshaw uh, with the Police Department. I'm going to cover tourniquet application uh, just very briefly with you. In 2014, every sworn member of the Police Department received training on proper application of a tourniquet as well as other uh, hemorrhage control methods uh, that we need as first responders to provide medical attention uh, to victims or, or injured persons through accidents prior to the arrival of fire department and EMS personnel. Um, studies have shown that 65% of preventable deaths occur from failure to control or stop blood loss adequately. As Captain Murray mentioned uh, previously, oftentimes police arrive to the scene prior to other medical responders. So having the ability to apply both direct pressure and the tourniquet uh, prevents substantial loss of blood and hopefully prevents uh, serious injury or death uh, to victims of violent acts, mass casualty incidents, uh, those injured in vehicle crashes, household accidents, or other substantial injury to extremities. And basically, it's a small piece of equipment that officers carry on their person throughout their duty day. Um, that you apply above an injured area, tighten it down in two methods, and stop the blood loss from occurring. Officers can also util utilize this on themselves if they find themselves injured throughout their duty day. And the final presentation for the Winston-Salem Police Department will be conducted by Police Lieutenant Tyrone Feltz. It will involve the Community Resources Unit and our Community Relations Specialist. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Tyrone Phelps. I'm um, currently assigned to the Chief's Office. This morning I want to highlight the Community Resources Unit, formerly named the Crime Prevention Unit. This unit is led by Sergeant Mark Snow. Assistant Sergeant Snow is Corporal Scott Boak and Officers Claudia Morgan, Todd Burge, and Kevin Weichel. The Community Resources Unit offer numerous programs and services to the citizens of Winston-Salem and conducts a variety of crime prevention and community relation activities for our department. The main goals of the unit are to inform the public of the importance of crime prevention and to establish better community relations between the police and the citizens we serve. Crime prevention creates a safer community and is the first line of defense in fighting crime. Crime prevention is the responsibility of the entire community, not just the police. With this in mind, the Community Resources Unit conducts and assists the community with educational programs and material throughout the year in a variety of ways on numerous topics. The following are the most of the activities and programs offered by the Community Resources Unit. Neighborhood Watch, National Night Out, Neighborhood and Community Meetings, Crime Prevention Booth, House Break-In Prevention, residential and commercial security surveys, child passenger car seat checks and installation, McGruff program, KC remote car program, officer friendly, stranger danger, career day, public safety center tours, personal safety, senior safety, holiday safety, bank robbery training, reporting suspicious activity and being a good witness, workplace violence, gun safety, youth and the law, drug recognition, drug and alcohol awareness, bullying, 
life choices, internet safety, identity theft, Operation Medicine Drop, Citizens Police Academy, Youth Police Academy, and we just had a Youth Academy that started Monday, July the 6th, and will go through Thursday, July the 10th. Volunteers in Public Services, or VIPS, Police Explorer Post, Shop with a Cop, School Supply Giveaway Event, and Community Relation Workshop. Please go to our website, WSPD.org, choose the tab for Community Resources Unit, Crime Prevention, for further information, or you can call the unit at 336-773-7835. Next, I will highlight the Community Relations Specialist position currently being held by Ms. Pam peoples Joyner. The Community Relations Specialist works very closely with the Community Resources Unit. The Community Relations Specialist builds community trust between our department and our citizens by developing and nurturing dialogue with citizens, businesses, and organizations. This dialogue builds mutually beneficial relationships by creating positive police and community interaction. The Community Relations Specialist is the bridge between our department and those in the community who might not trust or feel at ease talking with a sworn officer. The Community Relations Specialist networks with community resources to assist those most in need in our community. These strong community relationships can assist with pre preventing and solving crime. It helps the officers to better understand our citizens and helps the community to better understand our officers. The following are some of the projects, programs conducted by the Community Relations Specialists. Community Trust Talks with the City's Human Relations Department, Neighborhood Community Days and Reunions, Mentoring at Haynes Middle School, Mediate Neighborhood Disputes, Coordinating Back to School Giveaways from our department, Coordinate Youth Group Programs in Ladue Crest and Rolling Hill, Coordinate Resources for Homeless People Wanting to Relocate, Coordinate Community Resources for our Violent Crimes Task Force, Coordinated the first annual Gospel in the Park event which was held in the Cleveland Avenue community um, homes, and coordinate as a cop community meetings. For more information pertaining to this position, please contact Ms. Pam Peoples Joyner at 336-773-7962. At this time, I will turn it over to Chief Mayo and the Fire Department. Good morning, I'm Trey Mayo. I'm the Fire Chief for the City of Winston-Salem. And before we start this morning, I just want to uh, thank the, uh, recognize the, the men and women of the Winston-Salem Fire Department who uh, have been providing services under particularly grueling conditions for the last month or so uh, due to the uh, extreme heat and humidity that we have been experiencing here. Uh, firefighting uh, I under any conditions is taxing to uh, the human cardiovascular system, but uh, when the heat and humidity get up high like they have been for, for about the past month, uh, it is particularly strenuous. Um, there, in a typical year, there are between 80 and 120 firefighters who lose their lives in the line of duty um, across the country, and about half of those uh, each year die from cardiac arrest suffered from because firefighting is so strenuous on the body so uh, we won't just want to be sure that we recognize that effort uh, that that uh, that gets put forth by our men and women every day uh, we have two things uh, on the agenda today uh, the first will be a discussion of the uh, Weatherwood court uh, apartment fire that occurred on June 14th that was a major apartment fire and that will be uh, 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 Fire Investigator J.D. Councilman 
we'll discuss that. And then after uh, Captain Councilman, uh, Fire and Life Safety Educator, Sabrina Stowe will come up and talk about uh, the Citizens Fire Academy that the fire department conducts every year, uh, and which is, is just a, an outstanding uh, opportunity for uh, the citizens to come and experience uh, life as a firefighter and learn about all of the things that the Winston-Salem Fire Department does. We get, uh, you know, routinely uh, at the completion of that course, uh, we get uh, you know, our, our evaluations, you know, are just so expressive of the fact that people, you know, have no idea of all the, the, uh, the wide range of services that the Winston-Salem Fire Department provides. You know, we, get, we had no idea you did that. We didn't know firefighting required so many people. Um, we didn't realize you had to have such specialized equipment. So it really is an eye-opening experience for, for the citizens, and we really encourage uh, the citizens of Winston-Salem to take take advantage of this opportunity to come and spend time with uh, the men and women who provide fire and emergency services uh, on a daily basis. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Captain Councilman. to discuss with you uh, uh, the uh, apartment fire that occurred on June 14th, um, 104 Weatherwood Court. We received the call uh, and the call was dispatched at 12.23 a.m. on the 14th. The initial dispatch for the fire department uh, was four engines, two lighter trucks, one rescue truck, two battalion chiefs. Fire department first arriving unit arrived at 12.29 a.m. They arrived to find a two-story, 16-unit apartment building with fire extending through the roof and involving four units. A second alarm uh, was dispatched uh, at 12.45 a.m., bringing an additional two units, two engine company units, and two additional battalion chiefs for a total at that time of 34 personnel on the scene. After a long and rigorous fire attack, uh, the fire was brought under control at 1.36 a.m. Due to the aggressive fire attack uh, that was mounted, uh, the minimum uh, overall, the fire loss overall was, was minimum. However, there were three occupants one firefighter, one police officer that was transported to the hospital with minor injuries. All of those have since been released. In addition, there was one occupant who was transported to the hospital with serious injuries. That occupant is still in the hospital, however, is progressing. Uh, their, their condition is, is gradually progressing and, and improving. In all, the fire displaced 29 individuals. And those 29 individuals were assisted by the Forsyth County Emergency Management Division, Red Cross, and the Apartment Management uh, Company. The suppression uh, efforts uh, totaled a, a uh, time of seven, roughly seven and a half hours on scene time. Later on, uh, at in, uh, in to that night, a uh, fire investigator uh, was requested and arrived on the scene at, at 2.35 a.m. to begin the initial fire investigation. Uh, and during that investigation, it revealed that the fire originated on the first floor of the apartment building, apartment D. Multiple interviews uh, have been conducted with the occupants and several more are expected. Fire investigators were unable to enter the apartment of origin, first floor apartment D, however, due to the severe structural damage and the structural stability of that uh, building. So at this time, the fire investigation is ongoing and the fire at this time is classified as undetermined.
morning. I'm Sabrina Stowe with the Fire and Life Safety Education Bureau. Just wanted to talk about um, the Citizens Fire Academy, which is an annual workshop that the fire department conducts each year. It's going to be held from 6 to 8 p.m. on Mondays, beginning August 10th through 28th. And basically, it's, it's an eight-week workshop for residents interested in knowing more about what we do at the Winston-Salem Fire Department. It's not going to be a training to teach you how to be a firefighter, but you will get some idea of what we do in the fire department as far as operations. Um, you will get to do a, a ride-along at the end of the course, which will give you kind of a day in the life of a firefighter. Um, you'll learn some things that will be helpful to you in your everyday life some fire safety, um, educational and prevention type things. We're gonna teach you how to properly use a fire extinguisher. We're gonna talk to you about ways to make your home safe, safer, um, as well as some of the things that we talk about in our everyday prevention and education, public education events, um, and teaching people how to have um, a fire escape plan, um, things of that nature, how to have your house safer with smoke alarms and, and how to test those and use those. So it's going to be just an overall overview um, for fire safety for the personal use as well as what you may need to know if you would like to become a firefighter. We do have limited um, space available for residents of Winston-Salem and the surrounding areas. If you would like to be considered for the Citizens Fire Academy, you would need to apply online at cityofwsfire.org. Uh, or for more information, you can also give our office a call, area code 336-773-7965. And I'll turn it back over to Chief Mayor. Thank you, Sabrina. That concludes the presentation uh, by the Winston-Salem Fire Department, and I believe for the police department as well. Uh, at this time, we'll take any questions that anyone may have. Um, this question is for Lieutenant Rega about the Pacific Police presence at the uh, NAACP events in downtown. Yes, sir. Can we get an idea about how many officers, additional officers, will be there next Monday and throughout the week, or will there be officers there for the whole four-week trial there at the federal courthouse? We've assigned officers to work the parade route to ensure the safety of the participants. We'll have some officers on standby for crowd control should we need crowd control due to the size of the crowd. How many people are you expecting? The organizer said at about 2,000. Will you be down there for the entire trial? For no, a sir. month? No, sir. Okay. Just for next week? Just for Monday. Just for Monday? Are there any additional questions for the Winston Salem Police Department? Okay, that will conclude the July Public Safety News Conference. We appreciate all of your attendance. Have a good week. Thank you.